Good morning, brothers and sisters in our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, let us ca commence our meeting this morning, first of all, with a song, and then after the song, uh, I'll ask you to bow your heads and uh, we'll open with a word of prayer. So here's our opening song. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we come now today as we begin uh, our memorial meeting and we ask that you would be with us all, that you would open our hearts today and open our minds to the things that we hear. We will hear the word explained and we will hear all about your Son, even Jesus Christ. And it is in that man and in his life and in his death and above all the resurrection that we remember today that we have our hope. We are so thankful for it. Please be with us today as we sit down and take this time to remember you and your plan that you have for us as called by the life of that man, even Jesus Christ. Amen. So the question I have for this morning is, what is truth? What is truth? In, in John chapter 18, as Jesus stood before Pilate, having been taken from the Garden of Gethsemane and brought to these trials, it says that Pilate said to him, Are you the king? And Jesus answered and said, You say it. To this end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth hears my voice. And Pilate said to him, what is truth? And what's really interesting is that there was no answer given to him because the truth was standing right in front of him. Jesus was the manifestation of the truth. He was the demonstration or the example of what is truth. And the truth is God. God is truth. You know, I was, I was uh, 
watching my two of my grandchildren run around and play and, and wrestle and, and and I could see that somebody was gonna get hurt and, and I told them to stop running around inside my little house, stop jumping on my furniture. And they looked at me and they said, well, we're allowed to do this in our house. And I reminded them that in my house, I have rules. And if you wanna be in my house, you have to obey my rules. When you go to your mum and dad's house, they may have different rules and you have to obey those rules. So when we come to God's house, we have to obey God's rules, God's truth. You know, and God makes it pretty simple. God says, I am the creator and sustainer of everything. So in the very beginning of time, when he, when he created the earth and everything in it, he had rules. And he told Adam and Eve in the garden that there's a tree with fruit in it that you're not allowed to eat of that fruit. If you obey me, I will be pleased and I'll be happy with you just as I'd be pleased and happy with my grandsons if they did as I asked them to do. But if they disobeyed God, if Adam and Eve ate of the tree, they were told there would be a consequence. Their disobedience would result in their death. So God made it easy. Obey and live, disobey and die. In the same way as when it came to covering their nakedness, covering their sin, God says there's a right way and there's a wrong way. You can't cover your souls with fig leaves. There has to be the shedding of blood to cover your nakedness, to cover your sin. A right way to cover, a wrong way to cover. There's a right way to worship in the story of Cain and Abel. God said to Cain and to Abel, when you bring your sacrifice, there has to be the shedding of blood. So when Cain brought his vegetables, because he's a vegetable farmer, Cain was basically saying, listen, God, I'm going to worship you and sacrifice to you my way. I'm a farmer. I grow vegetables. I'm going to bring vegetables. I don't care what you want. I'm going to worship you my way. And God said to Cain, if you do well, I'll be happy. If you disobey me, I'll be unhappy. And so, brothers and sisters, in this world that we live in, our God has called us to be a part of his family, to live and to dwell in his house, in his world, in his creation. He has offered us eternal life if we follow his ways. And so this morning, as we, we come to remember the life and the death and the resurrection of his son, as he stands before us, he is truth. You know, we don't get to make the rules for God. God appeals to us to love him and to obey him, to please him, to do the things that he has asked us to do. And the greatest of those things is to love the Lord our God with all of our heart and with all of our soul. And so if we love our God, if we love our Lord Jesus Christ for the redeeming work that he has done for us, we will bow to his will. We will strive to be more like Jesus, to do his will, to do our Father's will, because we know that that pleases him, just like it is when our children do things for us that pleases us. We know the satisfaction. We know the glow in our heart when our children do the things that we have asked them to do. And so today as we come, to remember on the week that's past, to remember about the week, to think about the week that is to come, let us think about the love of our God for us, 
Let us think about the sacrifice that's been made for us because of that love, the enormity of that love that God would give his only son, that he would die and give his life so that we might have life and life eternal. So as we now come to partake of the, the bread and the wine, let us read of that moment in time where it says that as they were eating, Jesus took the bread and blessed it and broke it, and he gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup and he gave thanks and he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the forgiveness of sins. I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of the fruit of this vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom, in the kingdom of God. So I'm going to ask our brother Geordie to offer thanks for the bread. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day, Father, our daily bread. Thank you, Father, for this bread that we can share now. Even though we are not together in person, we thank you that we can remember Jesus. We know this bread represents his body. And as we take a piece of that body, Father, help us to remember that we are all bound together as that one body and we all represent a piece from that body help us to think about our own lives and help us to think about others just as jesus thought about others and help us father to show the love that you have shown and the love that the lord jesus has shown so bless this bread father now as we eat it as we ask this prayer in jesus name amen So Jesus took the bread and he blessed it and he broke it and he gave it to the disciples and said, take it, this is my body which is broken for you. I'm going to ask Brother Geordie to offer thanks for the cup. Our Father, we come boldly into your presence because of what Jesus achieved. We come to thank you for this cup, to thank you, Father, for this new covenant that we have in the Lord Jesus Christ, that we, Father, can have our sins forgiven that we can know you and we can have a relationship with you, Father. We thank you, Father, that we can now share this cup and it can remind us of the suffering of Jesus. But Father, it also reminds us of the joy of the resurrection, that new life, that that sacrifice that he laid down his life brought. Father, help us to sacrifice our lives for each other, and for you and for the Lord Jesus. Father, bless this cup now as we drink of it and we pray for that day when we will drink it anew in the kingdom of God with Jesus. In his name, amen. And he took the cup and he gave thanks and he gave it to them saying, drink ye all of it for this is my blood of the new covenant or the new promise which is shed for many for the remission of our sins. Well, once again, uh, thanks uh, very much for joining us and uh, we hope and pray that uh, uh, this little memorial uh, meeting and service has been of strength and encouragement and benefit uh, to you while we await the return of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we're going to close our, our time together this morning, uh, first of all with a song uh, and then with a prayer. So 
Our prayer is that God be with you until we meet again. Until that time, bye for now. Living waters, we have come, we have come. Wells of life, oh, we have come, we have come. From every nation and from every tongue. Come here to praise and thank you, oh, we have come. The Lord is the lamp and light of my salvation. Of whom shall I be afraid? For his word will shine a path in times of tribulation. Of whom shall I be afraid? Though the dread of the dark in times of desperation try to doubt that he will not stay. But the Lord will be the lamp and light of my salvation. Of whom shall I be afraid? Living waters, we have come, we have come. Wells of life, oh, we have come, we have come. From every nation and from every tongue, oh, we have come here to praise and thank you, oh, we have come. The Lord is the strength and might of my foundation on rock. Love is always sure in every situation On rock that no man has laid Though the fear of the flood in times of trepidation Try to shake the words that he gave But the Lord will be the strength and might of my foundation On rock that no man has laid Living waters, we have come, we have come Wells of life, oh, we have come, we have come From every nation and from every tongue oh, we have come here to praise and thank you, oh, we have come Living waters, we have come, we have come Wells of life, oh, we have come, we have come From every nation and from every tongue oh, we have come here to praise and thank you, oh, we have come Living waters, we have come, we have come. Oh, we have. Wells of life, oh, we have come, we have come. Oh, we have. From every nation and from every tongue. Oh, we have. Come here to praise and thank you, oh, we have come. Heavenly Father, our good Father, we come to you now in Jesus' name, thanking you for this day for our life and breath, for the love of God that you've shared abroad in our hearts in Jesus Christ. You have reminded us, as we've remembered him, of your love and of your goodness, of your justice and your power. And Father, we, we long for your kingdom. We long for your will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. So we pray now as your as your servants, as the brothers and sisters of Jesus Christ, that you will send us out now in power, in love, in truth, and in grace to this world around us, to our families, to our neighbours, that you will work powerfully in us, that you will open doors, that you will give us words, that you will give us courage, give us courage to give good news, and to love each other and our nation well. Father, we thank you for Jesus. Again, he showed us who you are and who we were made to be. And we long to see his face. We will see it in the face, faces of the poor and of the needy. We'll see it in the faces of our brothers and sisters. We will see his face in your word as we read it, keep bringing us back to you. Bring us back to your word. Bring us back to prayer. Oh, how we long to see you, Lord Jesus. And how we long to worship you and give you glory and see all of the world give you glory. Not because you took it, but because you truly deserve it. Because you are good. 
We are so good. Thank you for forgiving us. Thank you for making us whole and right. Give us more and more faith day by day to rise above this world, to rise above our struggles and to worship you, to have the peace and the hope that can only come through faith. So now we leave our lives and our hearts and our minds in your care. In Jesus' name, amen.